vice presidents in all of ABC America. Wow. So that not only have her become the regional vice president, but hold one of the number one spots for a regional director, ladies and gentlemen, that just means she's more focused than everyone else in the company. Yeah. And what I believe is if I'm going to take advice from someone, I don't want to take advice from someone who played the game of baseball 20 years ago. Yeah. I'd rather take the advice from the number one player today. Right. Because in time, things change. And she's been one of the number one people in AC America. It gives us the honor, the privilege, the opportunity to be able to capitalize on what's really allowing her to have that result. So tonight's training, she's going to kick off tonight's leadership training with the results. So if you're an executive team trainer here in this room, you're an executive team leader, or you're a team coordinator, or you're a regional director, or you're an RVP, every single person in this room, no matter what caliber of leadership you currently hold, you have the most to gain from tonight's information. So my recommendation is not just take notes, but take notes, record if you can, because this information is going to be nowhere close to powerful. It's going to be over the top, explosive. So without any further ado, please help me welcome one of my really, really good friends, someone that the entire world of ATO respects, uh, regional vice president, COC, Ms. Chanel Burns. <laughs> Okay. And he said, well, let's do it. 
And he showed me every step of the way how to achieve that goal. And so naturally, I said, okay, show me how to make more, right? <laughs> and so I was super excited about having success, even though I was away from my leadership when I got started and was so busy with my pregnancy and everything. I hit ETT back then in three weeks, hit ETL in 45 days. I was no, I knew that I was going to get divorced, so I moved back home to Baltimore. And uh, when I moved back home, I told my mom, I said, listen, I'm going to be able to walk away from my job within two years. And she thought I was crazy because my mother has been self-employed. She's a cosmetologist. So her thing was, why would you quit your job in corporate America with benefits, okay? And I said, you don't understand the corporate America life. And I can pay for my own benefits building ACM, okay? So when, even though I said I was gonna be able to quit within two years, I hit the ground running harder than ever when I moved back home. And Mr. Burt was running with me every step of the way. And instead of quitting in two years, I was able to walk away in six months because I started making more money than I was making full time as an engineer <laughs> consistently, right? So it just made sense for me to walk away, okay? Because ACN has literally allowed me to have time and money together. And even though I'm a woman, I'm not going to just be talking to women tonight. I'm going to be talking to all of you guys because uh, I used to train people and say, you know, you got to kind of be like a guy when you're building this because you got to keep your emotions out of the business. But I kind of found that to not be so true because I've recently met some men that were more sensitive to me. Okay. So I'm not going to say you have to be like a guy per se. I just need you to understand that in order to really build this business big, you have to learn how to accept your emotions and keep it moving. That's one of the great things that I love, and I think I have an advantage over so many people being married to Aaron Burke, because he is a no-nonsense, no-excuses type of guy. You know, there have been plenty of times I've been in tears, um, leaving my kids and even leaving him to go build a business, but I just had to suck it up and keep it going, because he's my only upline. There's nobody else I can talk down to, per se. You know what I mean? Because we always say positive down, negative up, right? Mm -hmm. So he's the only person that I can talk negative to, but he doesn't want to hear it. So I don't talk negative, right? So I'll just suck it up and keep going. And what I've learned, though, is me being able to accept my emotions and keep it going has allowed me to have a lot of results when it comes to this business. And that's what I'm gonna be training on you guys tonight, becoming results driven. Because when you are building this ACM business, the only thing that matters is the results that you're getting every single day, all right? So it's not about you just being a part of something where you can feel good. It's not just about you being in a positive, uplifting environment and just having something good in your life that you can look forward to. Listen, this is about getting flat out financially independent and having time freedom so that you can create generational wealth instead of leaving behind generational debt. Like so many people do. So every single day, this is how you need to wake up. You need to rise and grind for your family because your family's future depends on your work ethic here. That's it. Point blank period. The only way you're going to get massive results is if you really grind in this business. And there's going to be some times where you won't want to. There's going to be some times where you're going to question if it's even worth you going out, doing everything that you need to do to get the results. I'm here to tell you every single thing you're going to go through is going to be worth it. But you need to have this type of mindset. Every single day when you wake up, you can rise, you can pray, then go grind, okay? Because this is just the type of mentality that you guys have to have. It's not about playing around with ACF. This isn't a game here. You weren't blessed with this opportunity to just play with it. There are so many people in your lives today that's praying for this right now. They just don't know it's called ACF yet. But you have it. So now 
what are you going to do with it? Okay? So, why are you doing the business? I want everybody to write down why you are doing ACM. Because that's going to matter. That's going to even determine how hard you work your business. Okay? So, everybody write it down. Give you a couple seconds. Because when I got started in the business, my why, at first, it was all about me. Okay? But I had to learn that it had to be bigger than me. Because I could quit on me. But I couldn't quit on something that was bigger than me. So, everybody write your why down. Okay? And if I can get a couple people to stand up really quick and share your reason why with everybody. All right, one, two, can I get three more, five people? Two, three, four, five, okay, six people, you can see ten. All right, so everybody really quick, if you can just share the reason why. I want to see my dad at the hospital, I want to see my Okay. I want to be a stay-at-home dad for my daughter. I might be the one daughter here. Okay. I want to retire my mom and go visit every single country in the world. Okay. To set the example to my son what it means to be an entrepreneur and not work for someone. Mm -hmm. One big extra strand to have on my ACM. Uh, show up to my mom's house and show up with zero balance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. You have to really think You can do anything that makes them extra money, okay? But you have to write this down, and you have to be focused on it every single day when you're going out building your business. Because here's the thing. One of the things I looked up was the definition of result, okay? So here's one of the definitions I found. It said, the final consequence of a sequence of actions or events expressed qualitatively or quantitatively. Reaching no result can mean that actions are inefficient, ineffective, meaningless, or flawed. So, the reason why you are doing the business, when you're out building it every single day, when you're not getting results, that simply means that whatever you're doing is ineffective. Whatever you're doing is inefficient. Okay, if you're not getting results every day, that's either going to have you have a better quality of life or make you more money, you're not getting results in this one. Okay, so you have to make sure that you make your sacrifices worth it. You have to, because when I'm away from my family, I'm making sure I get results before I go back home. If I'm going to take time away from my three kids and my husband, who's already an SVP, mind you, okay? If I'm going to go out and build this business, flying all over to do whatever it takes to help people succeed, because here's the thing, I was told that when you help enough people pay their bills, your bills will always be paid. So if I'm going to take time away from my family, i got to make sure I'm getting results every single time. I heard my husband say one day that the, your production will make your whereabouts okay. See, some of you who are married and you don't, you're, you don't have 100% of your spouse's support, it's probably because you're building it or you say you're out building it, but they don't see the results coming from you being away from them. So you gotta make sure you're doing whatever it takes so you can show the results when you're away from your family. When you're on conference calls late at night, when you're going away to convention once a quarter for a couple of days, when you're going to training every single Saturday, when you're missing your kids' sports games, when you're doing all this stuff, you got to make sure that you're out there getting results because that's all that matters here. So what type of results? Let's look at the different events that we have in ACM. Let's talk about the launch meeting. When you are at a launch meeting, you need to be helping someone get customers. And one of the things that we've kind of shifted in my organization, 
I'm telling people to invite their closest people to the launch meeting because I want to get them to reps right away. I want to help them position themselves to get to ETT right away. So when someone gets started in the business, I'm not simply saying, hey, you know, when's the soonest we can get together? I'm saying, listen, I need to get with you either today or tomorrow. I need to help you position yourself right away to make money, to become profitable right away. I want you to also have your closest two to three people come with you because I want to help you get your first two business partners. So here's what happens. When they invite their closest people, you present to them, you get them in a the business, now you can launch all of them at the same time. That's the result. Instead of letting people schedule it for you or letting them be in control of the timing, you have to tell them when you're launching them. You need to create a culture of launching people within 24 to 48 hours max so that you can help them get qualified. Everybody excited about the new comp plan, right? <laughs> the only people that are really excited are people that are helping people get qualified. Because just getting people in the business doesn't mean anything. Okay? I know all TCs are excited about the pay raise, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. But the only way you'll really be excited is by you getting paid. And the only way you're getting paid is by getting people some services. And so you got to make sure you're creating a culture of getting people qualified right away. Now ACM pays them 40 bucks so that they can get some services. They are now documented in the company for making money. Can't we agree documentation beats conversation anymore? Yeah. Yeah. It's not about the amount. It's about them having a name on a check coming from ACN headquarters. So it's your responsibility as quote unquote leaders to make sure that happens right away. Okay? We didn't have that on the table prior to January 1st. So now that we have that on the table, when we know somebody can get a check right away, what is that going to do for their belief level? Not just in ACN, but in themselves so them even moving forward, right? So we got to get results at the launch meeting. Not just helping people get some services. Why don't you tell them to bring your closest two, three people with them so that you can present the information, get them in the business, help them get qualified as well. You can promote ETTs within their first week of business. How much excitement is that going to create in your organization? All we're doing is showing people how to get to ETT all over and over again, right? That's the basics of ACF. So as soon as you help people do it, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to be trying to help their people do the exact same thing. You know how fast you're going to be promoting TCs, RDs, RVPs? If you just create some urgency in your organization to get results at the first launch, you got to make sure you're doing that. Okay? The emergency PBR. You can have an emergency PBR within their first two days of being in the business. If you are someone who has a packed schedule, Okay, let's say someone gets started on Sunday, all right, and you are packed out Sunday, Monday, you can't necessarily schedule an emergency PBR for them per se, but you have PBRs the next day, tell them to invite to your events that you already have set up, that's their emergency PBR now. That's it. All this is is creating urgency for you to get more results. That's it. All you gotta do is tweak that little thing. Okay? Their grand opening. During the launch meeting, you should be helping people make calls. Okay? Helping people get the yeses. Going through the no's with them. You gotta make sure you're helping people invite the right way so that you can make sure they have people coming and that they know how to invite when you're not there. So, their grand opening. Within their first Five days of being in the business, they should have their emergency PBR, grand opening PBR. You can help people get promoted to ETT just like that. All this is is about exposures quickly. That's it. 
But see, some people wait for a week to have somebody's emergency PBR or their grand opening. Or you let people say, oh, well, I'm not available this day or that day. No, you tell people when they need to be available. Why? Because 97% of people that will get into your business come from an employee background. And employees are used to being told what to do. <laughs> right? right? And don't they do it? Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you just get some posture and tell people what to do? Because when people sign that rep agreement, they didn't sign to lose, they signed up to win. So you gotta start telling people what to do. Okay? Your weekly meetings, your BOMs, your Saturday training. How much real estate do you have in the room? How much real estate are you going to have in the room tomorrow? The real estate is only coming from what you have done throughout the week. Because Saturday is your report card for whatever you've done throughout the week. If you don't have guests tomorrow, if your team doesn't have guests, if you didn't confirm people to lock people in for tomorrow, then that tells me what you did throughout the week. And that will show me how much you're really making in this room. That's it. It's all about the results. It's all about making sure you have people being exposed to the opportunity. You making sure that people are coming to these events. The International Training Event, my husband's going to be talking about that today. How many people in your team do you have registered to go? Because the people that have the most people going to conventions will have the most production. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Okay? So, how many people do you have registered? Not are you registered. How many people do you have registered? Do you believe in it enough for you to promote it to your team so that more people can get registered? Do you believe that they can really win here without going? And if so, how hard are you promoting it? Because if you're not registered, number one, you don't believe in it yourself. You don't. If when he gets people registered tonight, okay, which he will do, that's going to show people that didn't really have a hundred percent belief in going before he talks about. But this is leadership. This is ECT or not leadership, okay. So if your leaders are telling you the only way you're going to get to a platinum regional vice president position, you have to attend every single event, you got to make sure that you're registered, but you have to have your people registered. Why? Because it's not just about you. It's about you having a team of people going. We were talking about Aaron's schedule earlier, and he's a senior vice president. And Nicola was asking him, like, what's your schedule like? He's like, I'll do PBRs every single day. Why? Because we're not done until we're all done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want people to go so that they can get to the top. I don't want to just be SVP. I want a team of people on my team to be SVP. This isn't just about my family. It's not just about my kids. It's about their kids and their kids and their kids and their kids. I need multiple SVPs in my organization for that to happen, for them to have true financial independence and time freedom as well. So how many people will you have going to Charlotte? You gotta become obsessed. You gotta become obsessed with getting results. You got to become obsessed with that reason why you wrote down. You want to pay for your family's medical bills? You need to be obsessed with that. You want to be a stay-at-home dad for your kids? You need to be obsessed with that reason why. You want to be able to show your parents a zero balance for their mortgage? You need to be obsessed with why you say you're doing the business. And you got to be obsessed with winning, period. I tell my team, our obsession is to be number one. I'm obsessed with being number one. I'm obsessed with being SVP. People ask all the time, why are you pushing so hard to go SVP? Your husband's SVP. Because it's going to be so much better having two SVPs in my house. That's why. <laughs> He's my husband, he's my mentor. As my husband, 
sometimes he feels like, listen, I worked hard for us. You don't have to work so hard. But then as my mentor, he's like, go for it. Because I respect what you're doing. Go for it. That's what it is. Because he knows I'm, obs I'm obsessed with PBRs. I'm obsessed with being in somebody's living room. I'm obsessed with helping somebody get qualified. I'm obsessed with helping somebody get a check. I'm obsessed with somebody getting promoted on Saturday morning. I'm obsessed with people getting promoted to TC so they can walk the stage in Charlotte. I'm obsessed with getting results with my team. Because here's the thing, you better become obsessed about the things you want, otherwise you're gonna spend a lifetime being obsessed with making up excuses as to why you didn't get the life you wanted. <laughs> You gotta be obsessed, totally obsessed. Where all you think about is giving your parents a zero balance for their mortgage. All you think about is being a stay-at-home dad. All you think about is being able to take care of your family's bills. All you think about is why you wrote the reason why you're doing the business on that piece of paper. You have to be obsessed with debt today, moving forward. Because when you're obsessed with debt, you'll be obsessed with getting results so that you can achieve the goals that you're shooting for. You gotta be obsessed. And I'm gonna show you a little video really quick of what obsession is all about. Now the big story here tonight, the story concerning Michael Jordan's physical conditions. It's Jordan arriving about two hours ago. He is suffering from flu-like symptoms. Made his way out of the court just moments ago. Never any doubt in how it stretched out. How, how weak were you? I'm very tired. I'm very weak. At halftime, I told you. I feel that once we in the sports, but I mean, somehow I found energy. Just stay strong. I'm going to be really bad. All right, congratulations on a great game, Michael. Get some rest. Thank you. Thank you.
See, here's what I'll tell you when you're willing to do everything. Everything. I mean, everything. You won't have to because God will step in and take over. He'll work it out. He'll work it out. See, he was willing to do that, but he didn't have to miss it. And then the following convention, he was promoted to SVP. But he was willing to do it. We're willing to sacrifice some time right now so that we don't have to sacrifice anything later. Anything. It only takes a couple of years of your life for you to really build a big business here. It's just about you getting results every single day. That's it. So you got to be willing to sacrifice something. And everybody's not willing to sacrifice or give up the same things, right? Because we're just not, right? I'm willing to give up some things that you're not, and you may be willing to give up some things that I'm not, okay? But you have to be willing to give up something. You have to give up to go up. Do you guys understand that? Yeah. Okay? So you got to be willing to give up. I left my house at times in tears going to the airport because I had to travel to go build my business. I'm going to the airport and got <coughs> in tears, got on the plane still in tears because I had to go away to build my business. Not knowing what was going to happen when I got there. Not knowing if it was going to be a no-show or anything like that. Because we are always taught, okay, 90% of your time will be a waste of time. But it's the 10% that will allow you to become financially independent. But you got to do it all. Okay? There's plenty of times where I didn't feel like going to do a PBR. I've gone through three pregnancies building my business. Three. When I got started, I was pregnant. <laughs> I was. Had my daughter. A couple years later, got pregnant with my son. I hit regional director eight and a half months pregnant. And when our son was born, it was June. I missed the convention only because I had my son the day before we were supposed to leave. That was all, the only excuse you can have. <laughs> okay, so I didn't, there were plenty of times I didn't feel like doing stuff, but I felt the feelings and did it anyway. Because here's what I can tell you. I don't make excuses, I make results. When people say that about you, people that know Chanel Burke know I don't make excuses. They know it. They, they just do. Because that's who I am. But who are you? And you may not be there yet, but do you even want to get to that point where if people heard your name, they would say, oh, they don't make excuses, they make results. I don't make excuses, okay? I just don't. Excuses aren't acceptable. Excuses won't make me money. Excuses won't allow me to have the time freedom that I really want for my baby. <laughs> excuses won't get it. Look, this is me. In a little room. <laughs> That's me. Can we agree I'm pretty big? <laughs> Swollen feet, all that stuff. I'm humongous. <laughs> I didn't feel like going to PBR, right? I didn't feel like driving. I was hungry. <laughs> I was tired. Probably didn't know if I was going to get some apps that night or not, right? But I did it anyway. 
because I never make excuses when it comes to helping the team. Mm -hmm. Because I know if I help the team win, mm -hmm. I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. My family's going to win. Okay? So if I can do this, if I can go to a convention like this, okay, if I can do this, Please remember, my husband's already at the meeting. We have money. I can do what I want. Whenever I want. With whoever I want. I have that already. But I haven't finished what I started. So I don't necessarily, quote unquote, have to do all that I do. But I do have to do what I do. If that makes sense. Yeah. So if I can do this, what's your excuse? What is it? Do you want to make excuses or make money? Do you want to change your family's financial future or not? Yeah. I mean, do you? I mean, I hope this is inspiring some women in here because I was looking at the production charts. And for SAP, REP, RD, it wasn't that many women on there. We need to get more women on the charts. Can you guys agree with that? Yeah. yeah. You see, I believe this is the era of the woman. Not the year, not the country. It's the era. Okay? So, you gotta stop making excuses, okay? Oh, my kids have this. Let somebody else take them to their games. Oh, I got to do this with my kids. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, I, listen, I have a lot of support. But in the beginning, I used to have to take my daughter to PBRs with me and have my team watch her in another room while I went and presented the babies. Okay. You're a team. You gotta help each other. Because you can't let your kids be your excuse. You gotta let your kids be your motivation to win. Right. So if this is me in the living room, eight months pregnant, not really feeling like it, <laughs> but doing it anyway, you can do it. Because so many people talk about the life that they want, the lifestyle, the money, the freedom, and all this stuff. But here's what I can tell you. <clears throat> Don't be upset by the results you didn't get with the work you didn't do. <laughs> Don't be upset that you're not TC yet by your TC date that you had wrote down as one of your goals if you weren't doing what it took to get it. <coughs> Don't be upset. Why are you upset? You're going to do the work. Uh, all it takes is work. That's it. You want to be on the chart? Do the work. That's it. That's all it takes. It's work. Most people just don't want to work. You look at other people's life. You look at other people's lifestyle. You look at what they're wearing. You look at, you know, all their vacations. You look at all this stuff, but guess what? You can have it too. You can have it too. We got the same opportunity. Same thing. But why is it that some people have massive success and some people don't? Because some people aren't willing to put in the work. That's it. Okay? So you got to change some things about yourself. You got to change your mindset. You got to change your habits. Okay? Because change is mandatory for extraordinary results. It's the extra work that you put in that will get you extraordinary results. You can't be ordinary and live an extraordinary life. Because ordinary people don't live extraordinary lives. They just don't. Okay. So you have to change. You gotta probably change your priorities. I listened to Greg Pullman Conway 
one day when he said, your priority should be God, family, and everything else. And I'm not here to force my faith on anybody, but I believe in God, so I have to talk to him. Because me putting God first in my life has changed everything. Everything. I had to get my priorities in order because so many times when you're growing your business, you can get caught up in ACN, 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 right? You're so focused on your goals. And you're not going to have balance in your life. It's okay for you to be unbalanced, right? That means you're doing something right, okay? But you have to make sure your priorities are in order. And so if Greg says it, I'm calling call him Greg because he just called me the other day in the chat, right? So I feel like we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> so Greg called me the other day. Just, you know, just talking. So I, I talked to him, you know, a couple times and I told him how me putting God first. I said, listen, I gotta talk to you about this. I've been putting God first. I mean, you see the chart, Greg. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you firsthand, this is why you see me as a representation of my group, because it's not me, right? But it's our group that has made the shift in putting God first in our lives that has changed our business. I go to church every Wednesday for Bible study. And I don't know where your businesses are. I'm just telling you my story. Okay? I go to church every Wednesday for Bible study. And I felt like God was telling me to serve in my church by joining a dance ministry. I love to dance. Might as well dance for a boy. Right? <laughs> I can't sing. Okay? So, I well dance for God. So, I was wrestling with that because here I am wanting to be a top producer. So, Dance practice is on Tuesday. So how can I go to church Tuesday and Wednesday, taking time away from my business, and still be a top producer? So I joined, but then I stopped because I said, I can't do this. I can't take away two days a week. Because sometimes on the weekends, I don't work as much because my husband doesn't work on the weekends anymore because he doesn't have to, right? So he likes to spend time with the family, whatever, relax. And so sometimes because he's my husband, I will be home with him. So how do I do this and still be a top producer? Well, I went to church one night and my pastor talked about shift. I'm like, the shift. God's trying to take you somewhere else. And it's time for me to shift gears. You gotta listen to what he's telling you to do. And I knew he was telling me to serve in your dance ministry. So I said, Well, I gotta do it. I told my husband, I said, You know, I gotta do this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll do PBRs 10 o'clock on Tuesday nights if I need to because I had to do this. He said, you know, you don't have to figure all this out. I'll help you on Tuesdays. I'll do PR you on Tuesdays. See, mm -hmm. well, I'll help you on Tuesdays, right? Because you don't help my group like that. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> he said, I'll help you on Tuesdays. There you go, go out working out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, so I wasn't even going to ask him. Because. I just don't. I told you, we work the business together, but we're separated. Okay? So he said he would help me. I'm like, great. But I started doing PBR still, 10 o'clock at night. Dance practice from 7 to 9. I'm okay. just changing. Go get in the living room. Okay? But ever since I started doing that, we jumped up on the charts from a top 10 RVP organization in the top five because I was being obedient. So here I am, top five organization representing a top five organization, but I don't work.
personally on Tuesday, Wednesday, and sometimes on the weekends. When I used to do PBRs every single day, my life was 6.30, 8.30, 6.30, 8.30, blitz on the weekends, everything. But as I started growing spiritually, I started being able to hear from God. And this is what he told me to do. So now I know that me being Chanel Burke is not really about this. It's really about building his kingdom through this. So that's exciting. So you gotta change something. Whatever you whatever your faith is, just grow. Trust me, just grow. And make time for your family. I remember I called um, Tanya Anderson. And um, I said, Corey Anderson's wife. And I said, you know what? I was thinking, like, should I really be working so hard, spending time away from my kids like this? I mean, my kids are so young. I'm missing this and that. She said, we need you to. We as women need you to work like this. You're showing all of us that is possible. So here's what you do. You create memories for your kids that they will never forget. Because the time that you'll be away won't matter anymore. So that's what you guys got to do. You got to create memories with your family that are so big, so important that they'll never forget it. So your time away from them won't matter as much. Enroll your kids into a vision that they can understand. I used to tell my daughter that mommy had to go to meetings so that she could get toys. <laughs> because she used to say, why do you have to go to a meeting? You got to go to another meeting? Why do you have to go? And I said, well, listen, mommy goes to meetings so that you can get toys. So it went from, why do you have to go to a meeting to, you don't have a meeting? <laughs> on January 1st, instead of being with my family, you know, we brought in the new year, New Year's Eve, but on January 1st, I was out of my house because I had four PBRs that day. And when I came home with multiple apps in the system, my daughter, uh, we were talking, and I said, you know, Mommy's going to work really hard this year so I can get promoted to SUP. That's Aaron's position. Okay. And she said, well, isn't it your position better than Aaron's because R comes with her S? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, and he's like, listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> SUP is the best. I'm the best. <laughs> so I said, Mom's going to work really hard so I can get promoted to Aaron's position, okay, SCP. Then you guys can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Okay, you still got to do school, but you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. So we went away last weekend, and when I came home, I was home for like an hour. I had to change, do dress. Go out, do 6 30, I was just gone from Thursday to Tuesday. Thursday, we went to Texas. Saturday, he surprised me, flew me to meet, flew me to meet him in Vegas. We stayed till Tuesday, came back. I was in living rooms that night. And when I came home, okay, I said, listen, we'll hang out tomorrow after school. What do you want to do? Pick something. Whatever you want, we'll do it. And my daughter said, but you're not SCP yet. <laughs> <laughs> she remembered what I told her. She remembered that I said, we'll do whatever you want when mommy is asking you. See, you being out building your business away from your kids, thinking it's hard because they're crying at the door when you leave, or they're pulling on you because they don't want you to leave to go to another meeting. Here's what I can tell you. That emotion for them goes away like that. It's harder for you than it is for them. You leave thinking about, oh, should I just go back home? 
to be with them. You call and check on them. They playing. They ain't worried about So go out and build your business. It's okay. You're building it for them. So you have to change your priorities. God, family, everything else. Okay? Everything will work with ACM. And I'm not telling you to not work hard with ACM. Okay? You have to work hard with ACM. But you have to change your priority. You have to change yourself. You have to change your mindset. You have to change your habits because change is mandatory for you to get extraordinary results. Some of you need to change how much you're showing the plan in this business. Do we have one through tens? Or no? Okay. All right. So, here's what I can tell you. Okay. It doesn't matter what position you're at in the business, okay? You have to expose people in the business in AC, to ACM in order for them to get in. You have to show the plan, okay? There are some ETTs in here who may feel like I'm not ready, okay? But here's the thing. You are ready because you've heard the presentation over and over and over again. When you hear a song over and over and over again, don't you start learning the words? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Who's an ETT in here that has not presented the business yet? Raise, up, raise your hand. They're like, they're like this. <laughs>